Good morning, Mountain Rose Herbs virtual community. My name is Carrie, and this is Guapo, the Swainson's Hawk. And we are here at the Cascades Raptor Center live to talk a little bit about Guapo and to answer any questions later on um, when you have them. So feel free to write those in. We do have a moderator that will ask those questions as we go along or towards the end. Um, and I'm just going to talk a little bit slowly while people get on. Um, Guapo here, in case anyone is interested, is working on a piece of rabbit. So that's usually the first question I get when I have him out. Um, and Guapo is one of our residents here at the Cascades Raptor Center. He is a four-year-old Swainson's hawk, which is a raptor that is native to Oregon. However, you have to go over towards Eastern Oregon to find them. They do not live in the valley. Um, these guys like to live in high desert areas, um, so that Eastern Oregon habitat is perfect for them. They are very similar to our red-tailed hawks that we have around here. They are a broad-winged soaring raptor that hunts. He's looking at a chipmunk back there that is crawling pretty close to us. Um, <laughs> They hunt lots of animals that you would expect to be in those open habitats. So naturally, Swainson's hawks would be eating rats and mice, snakes, lizards, um, all those delicious animals that are in those open habitats. And the other thing that they're really great at catching is grasshoppers. So that is Swainson's hawks in a nutshell. Oh, actually, one more thing. The cool thing about Swainson's hawks is that these guys have a very long migration. So every year, these guys migrate all the way down to South America, all the way down to Argentina. So they have one of the longest migrations out of any of the raptors. It takes them about a month and a half to get down there. And down there, they're often referred to as grasshopper hawks because they eat lots of grasshoppers down there. Now Guapo here, he is one of, um, of our amazing educational ambassadors and he came to us, like I said, four years ago. Um, he was found on the beach at Gold Coast. Um, now that's not uh, adequate habitat for these guys. Like I said, these guys are found in Eastern Oregon. And he was found because he was coming down to people um, landing on arms, begging for food, and that is not normal behavior for a raptor, a wild raptor. So most likely what we assume happened with Guapo is that someone found him as a baby, raised him illegally, and unfortunately released him in the wrong habitat. So Guapo is what we call a human imprint or a mal imprint. So he does not know he belongs with humans. And when he was released into the wild, he thought food came from humans. So he just came to humans to get food. And that's why he is with us. That's his story. And being one of our educational ambassadors, he is one of the birds that can be adopted and sponsored. Um, and that is why we're here today with Mountain Rose Herbs, because Mountain Rose Herbs has very generously sponsored Guapo the Swainson's Hawk. Do we have questions that are coming in? Yeah, um, somebody all? wanted to know how fast they can fly. So Swainson's hawks aren't known for their speed. They're not like our peregrine falcons, right? So peregrine falcons, they have those high speeds of over 200 miles per hour. Swainson's hawks are really a soaring raptor. I'm just gonna give him that because he's wanting to pull it out of the glove. Um, so I'm not sure a precise miles per hour, but <laughs> <laughs> there we go. He'll hold it himself. Um, but definitely not as fast as those falcons, for sure. What are their predators? So these guys would have to watch out for bigger raptors, like a bald eagle or golden eagle maybe, but mostly bald eagles, possibly. Um, other than that, probably not going to have a lot of other predators, unless they're injured and on the ground. Um, then they might have to work, uh, watch out for any of those ground carnivores. And that would be if they were injured. 
has climate change affected their species at all? Um, not, let's see, how do I answer this? Um, <laughs> not vastly, it's not known that it has affected them much, no. How is it that they can see the crickets? <laughs> so raptors have amazing vision. Um, these guys can, hey, what are you doing? You got it? Okay. Um, yeah, so amazing visions. These guys can see a lot further than we can and in much more detail than we can. So raptor vision, you know, we sometimes equate it to, imagine you were standing on a football field and one person was on one side and the other person was on the other side. A raptor can see in such detail that they might be able to read a newspaper from that other side. So incredible vision. So those crickets, easier to find. Can you let folks know where we're located? I see some questions about that. Yeah, so we're again from Cascades Raptor Center, which is in Eugene, Oregon. And we are on the side of Spencer's Butte. Um, and they're working on the trail down there, which is why you're hearing some lovely chainsawing in the background right now. Um, but we are open to the public, so you can come see Guapo and all of our other residents here at the Raptor Center. Um, we're open Tuesday through Sunday, 10 to 4 currently, and all of our ticket sales are online right now um, to try to keep everyone safe um, here and our, with our volunteers and our visitors. Are raptors native to all of the U.S.? Yes, there are different types of raptors all over the United States. Um, these guys tend to be only in the w uh, western part of the United States. Um, but yeah, tons of different raptors all over the United States. I see on here what is the ideal climate for raptors. Could you explain a little bit about how raptors migrate and why they migrate? Yeah, so there is no really ideal climate for a raptor. Um, there are raptors that live in all different sorts of climates. So we have raptors that live much more in the north and will migrate down here in the winter time, like our jeer falcons, um, merlins, um, so other raptors. Um, we have raptors like guapo here who in the winter time will migrate down south. Like I said, these guys go as far as Argentina. Um, turkey vultures will migrate out of the area during the winter times. Um, and osprey also will migrate during the winter. Um, there are a lot of birds and raptors though that do stick around here year long. So a lot of our owls tend to be here all year long. So the great horns, um, the screech owls, barn owls, you'll see them here all year. Do the females look much different than the males? Uh, not in Swainson's hawks, no. So in raptors, one of the ways that you can tell males from females is by size. So in the raptor world, the girls are going to be bigger than the boys. Um, and that's in general, right? We've learned um, the hard way several times uh, when we've, you know, seven years after we've had a bird, we found out that she was a he, or he was a she, not a he. Um, but with Swainson's hawks, they look pretty much identical. And if you've been up to the Raptor Center, um, you may be seen Guapo before. We also have another Swainson's hawk here that lives with us, Taka. And Taka is what's known as a dark, dark morph Swainson's hawk. So he is a lot darker than Guapo here. Um, he has a lot more chocolatey brown. But with Swainson's hawk, that defining characteristic is they have a very obvious bib of dark feathers, which Guapo is working on his rabbit spine, so you can't really see that, but there you go. That bib right there is the Swainson's hawk characteristic. Um, somebody asked if this is being recorded. It is, so we'll be posting a recording after the live video. I see on here someone said that they call all large birds hawks. What other types of birds are raptors other than hawks? Is there, I don't know. So, yeah, so what other birds are raptors? So, hawks are raptors, eagles are raptors, um, osprey, harriers, owls, vultures. Some people will argue that point. We lump them in there right now, but... 
Um, our turkey vultures are questionable, but they're in there for now. Falcons, um, kites, white-tailed kites. Um, so a raptor, the definition of a raptor is a bird of prey that hunts using its feet. So there are other birds of prey, like a heron is a bird of prey, but a heron is not a raptor because a heron has that long beak that it uses to spear fish with. Um, so if it's a raptor, it has to catch food with its feet. They have these strong, powerful toes with those sharp talons on the ends, and it has to eat other animals. Um, and they are actually obligate carnivores, meaning um, they have to eat other animals. So they can't survive on seeds, nuts, fruits, berries, anything like that. And as you can see from him eating the rabbit spine here, um, he is getting a little bit of bone. I'm also feeding him some mouse bits. So not only do they eat the meat, but they're eating the fur, the organs, the muscle meat, every part, and they have to do that to maintain a healthy diet. Are condors also a raptor? I see a question about that today. Yes, condors are also raptors. They are part of that vulture family. And the question about the vulture family is, or the vultures, are turkey vultures, which we have around here, are scavengers. So they don't hunt with their feet. They have actually relatively weak feet compared to the other raptors. Um, but there are other vultures around the world that do hunt. So again, questionable if they are raptors or not. Do but, they have a, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Do they have a crop like chickens do? They do, but they don't have a gizzard like chickens do, right? So they're not going to be swallowing stones to crush up their food that's in that crop. Um, these guys, they have, except for owls, owls don't have a crop, but they have a storage area, which is right in here. And so when Guapo's eating, his food is moving down into that area. And then over the next hour, he'll kind of move his head around like that and push it down into his stomach. And then down in his stomach, he will form a pellet. So a pellet's gonna be made out of any of that fur, the bones, the feathers, nails, anything that they didn't, or they ate that they didn't digest. And they'll cough that up into a pellet. How many birds does the Raptor Center save per year? <laughs> Well, this year we are on a record, uh, record year, so we've had more intakes this year than any of our other years, and usually we say about 300 to 350. Um, I believe the bird that came in on Saturday that we just worked with was number 246. Um, so we have a lot of birds. We had a busy baby season this year. Um, we've had a lot of eagles this year. We got our fourth eagle in that Saturday night, so last Saturday night. Have you released a lot of birds this summer already? Or? We do, yeah. So um, we try to release birds whenever we can. Um, ultimately, that's going to be the best for them, and especially baby birds. So we have a very dedicated rehab team here, and our staff vet and our rehab assistant spend a lot of time re-nesting baby birds. Um, so we get those owls that fall from their nests, those hawks that fall from their nests, and um, you know, our vet spends hours and hours out there. She'll put the baby back and then watch to make sure mom and dad come back because we don't want to just leave them out there. And we've actually been pretty successful this year with renesting babies. So ideally, that's the best because they do better with their natural parents than with us here. Is his call loud? <laughs> he can be pretty loud. Um, he also has a very sweet noise that he makes. He's being pretty quiet right now because um, he's kind of contentedly working on his rabbit. Um, but he has a warning call that can be definitely pretty loud, and then his normal stuff is, is pretty sweet, actually. It's nice and quiet. Could you explain the difference in resident birds and your birds in the hospital, that seems to be um, confusing sometimes. So. Yeah, so the question was, can we explain the difference between our resident uh, birds, so the birds that are coming to our hospital, or the birds that are our educational ambassadors and the birds that are coming into our hospital. Um, so they are a very different group of birds. Um, all the birds that are our resident or educational ambassadors all go through a long period of assessment before they are chosen to do this job. Um, we want to make sure that these birds are comfortable meeting the tens of thousands of visitors that we see every single year. 
Um, we want to make sure that they are receptible, uh, receptive to our positive reinforcement training, which is the training that we do up here. So all of our birds have a choice whether or not to work. And of course, when they choose to work with us, they get rewarded with yummy, delicious treats. Um, and so these guys are very comfortable around us. They're used to being around people. Um, they're comfortable around people. Now, the birds that we see in our hospital, they are scared, they are stressed. Um, you know, they don't know that we're trying to help them. Um, so they actively avoid us. They try to get away from us. So with them, we try to be as hands-off as possible. Um, as soon as they're done getting medication or fluids or anything like that, they are put in aviaries that are up on top of our hill that are um, not seen by the public. And they can have a quiet area where they can just hang out and chill. So something, could you let ambassador, or a lot of people don't understand that our ambassadors are not releasable. Um, yeah. Can you explain that a little bit? Better, yeah. Too? So all of the birds that we have here um, on site, all of our educational ambassadors, oh, Quapa's going to rouse maybe? Oh, no, he got distracted by a fly. Um, all of our birds that are here on site are with us for one, re one reason or another that makes them not able to be released. So they wouldn't survive on their own in the wild. And all of them have different stories. We went over Guapo's story at the beginning. Oh, now it's going to shake out. Okay, so this behavior right here is called a rouse. Oh, nice. <laughs> and you guys are going to get dusted by all his dander there. Um, and that is a behavior that we love to see on our residents because that signals that he's feeling comfortable, that he's feeling relaxed. Um, so it's a good good thing to see. We're happy that he's, he's doing that. He's enjoying the sun and enjoying some bird and chipmunk watching out behind us. What type of reasons do um, raptors end up in the rehab hospital? I see that question on here. Yeah, so we get raptors in for all sorts of reasons. Probably our main reason, or our main injury is being hit by a vehicle. Um, so these guys hunt along roadsides a lot, so they get hit by cars. Um, we also see babies that fall from their nests. Um, those are the best because oftentimes those guys are not injured at all. They just need a little bit of fluids, an overall thing, and they can go back. We like those ones when they're not injured. Um, we see electrocutions. We see rodenticide poisoning. Um, we see window strikes. So those cooper's hawks and those sharp shins that are hunting birds off of bird feeders sometimes aren't paying attention to where they're going and they just smack right into a window and um, can damage, damage themselves pretty badly doing that. Um, so those are probably the main, uh, caught by cat, that's another um, big one for the littler owls and the littler birds as well. How do they maintain hygiene, like mite prevention? Do they dust bathe? Yeah, so some of them do dust bathe. Um, you dropped it. They do all have pools um, or bathtubs in their aviaries, and these guys will bathe quite a bit um, and they do that to stay clean they also do it when the weather's hot so um, they will get down in their tubs spread their feathers shake everything out get that water up in there um, we do have dust baths or sand baths in several of our aviaries for our, um, our residents pup here he's got one in there that he was using yesterday we were watching him so um, they also spend a lot of time preening themselves so they will take their beak and they will comb that beak through their feathers how old is he guapo is four years old so guapo came to us in october of 2016 and he was full grown so he was probably about three months old when he came to us or four months old Someone asked if you have an Instagram page. We do have an Instagram page. Yes, uh, Cascades Raptor Center. And uh, we try to post, well, every weekday at least on it. So please follow us on there. Um, lots of fun pictures of our raptors. Um, we're doing a lot of showering now. So we're doing a lot of showering posts, which are always fun to see when it's hot like this. Um, the afternoons are mostly spent out with the hose giving birds showers. And some of them get really, really into it. It's pretty fun to watch. How much do they typically weigh? Uh, so it's all different, obviously. Guapo here, he weighs in at about two pounds, two and a half pounds, if he's 
on his bigger side. Um, but our biggest raptor on site is one of our bald eagles, and she weighs in max about 12 pounds. So they are a lot lighter than you'd think they are. Um, they're mostly feathers, and then they've got those hollow bones. Here. We have people watching all the way from Bhutan today, I see. Yeah. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Any last questions? Aw, we hope so too. <laughs> Somebody said they in, they rescued an injured baby Merlin. Oh, cool. On Sunday. They took him to a rescue center and that they hope he makes it. Yeah. We hope so too. So how long is his wingspan is the last question. How long is his wingspan? His wingspan is probably about three feet. So if there aren't any other questions, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank you to Mountain Rose Herbs for having us live on their feed. And um, thanks again to Mountain Rose Herbs for sponsoring Guapo and several of his other friends. And we hope to do this again and see you guys soon.